Welcome. We're going to study pH calculations today and you need a calculator that has a log button on it. If you've got a calculator with a log button, you're good to go. We've already learned about the difference between concentration and strength of an acid or a base. Because you cannot use the concentration to know what the strength of an acid is, and because you can't know the strength of an acid to know its concentration, chemists determined a way to get an all-inclusive number to use, and that number is called the pH. pH stands for the potential of hydrogen. The pH scale goes from 7 to 14. 7 is considered neutral. Water is a neutral compound. Anything from 0 to 7 on the pH scale is an acid, and anything over 7, from 7 to 14, is considered a base. In addition, barring anything else uh, to the contrary, anything from 0 to 4 is usually a strong acid, and anything from 4 to 7, closer to neutral, is a weak acid. On the other side of the scale, close to neutral, anything from 7 to 10 is a weak base, and anything greater than 10, 10 to 14, would be a strong base. Here's a diagram of the pH scale, and you can see uh, in this area right here, 0 to 3, these are considered to be strong acids. On the other end of the scale, from 11 to 14, these are strong bases. Neutral is right in the middle, that's 7, and water is 7 when it's just pure water. On the left side, 4, 5, and 6, and all the way up to, but not including 7, that's considered a weak acid. And starting just at 7 and going up uh, until you get to about uh, 10 or 11, that's considered to be a weak base. Here we have a scale which shows the pH of some common uh, things. Battery acid is the first example. I'm talking about the sulfuric acid, H2SO4, that's present in lead acid batteries, like a car battery. Very, very strong, around pH zero. Next are gastric juices. Gastric juices, about a pH one. That's the hydrochloric acid that's present in your stomach and helps uh, break down proteins uh, in the food that you eat. Lemon juice is fairly strong, around a two, maybe a little less or a little more. And um, so it's, it's a fairly strong acid. Believe it or not, ordinary colas, um, Coke, Dr. Pepper, are just a little above two, which means uh, in addition to being bad for your teeth because of the sugar, they're bad for your teeth because of the acids. They will actually dissolve the uh, calcium appetite, which is the mineral substance that your teeth are made of. So uh, drinking a lot of sodas is bad for you in two ways. Vinegar is next on the list. It's around a three and we're beginning to get out of the uh, out of the strong acid range and into the weak acids. Uh, there are also some acid rains that have been measured in the mid threes, three and a half or thereabouts. Next we have tomato juice around a four um, and we'll skip the beer and go on to black coffee, my favorite, which is about pH 5. Rainwater is a little bit over 6, and I'm talking natural rainwater, not acid rain. You may wonder why rainwater uh, isn't a 7, like pure water. But rainwater, when it falls, picks up carbon dioxide that's present naturally in the air, and in water, the carbon dioxide forms carbonic acid. So the pH of rainwater is actually a little on the acidic side. Cow's milk, also a little on the acidic side, around six and a half. And finally, human saliva, very, very close to seven, but just a tiny bit on the acidic side, around 6.8. Human blood is uh, the first one on the basic side, so I've switched over to the color blue, uh, because blue is the color that litmus turns in a base. Human blood is around seven and a half. It actually is in a very narrow range 
uh, because otherwise our blood chemistry wouldn't work correctly. Egg whites, a slightly bit more basic in the upper sevens. And seawater, close to about eight on the pH scale. The reason seawater is basic is because of all of the dissolved minerals. Pancreatic juices come in around 8.5. The pancreas produces um, caustic materials, basic materials, and enzymes uh, which uh, feed into your body's digestive system. And the juices it produces are predominantly designed to dissolve all the fats and oils and greases and things that you eat. Uh, so when you eat that fatty food, the pancreas helps uh, break that down. Bleach comes in at about pH 9, and believe it or not, Great Salt Lake, uh, that inland sea almost, uh, in Utah, comes in at a pH of 10. And the reason it's so basic is because it has a lot of dissolved minerals that have accumulated over uh, you know, millennia, I guess, coming into that river and then uh, coming in from the rivers that feed the lake and then evaporating. So it's become very, very concentrated and, uh, and also has a lot of minerals which bring it up to about a pH of 10. Liquid soap is around a pH of 11 and we're getting out of the range of the weak bases now and into the strong bases. Ammonia really is right on the list. Um, um, household ammonia is ammonium hydroxide, and it's technically a weak base, but it's, it's on the border of being strong, especially when you compare it to other household chemicals that you might encounter. Uh, it's fairly strong. The next one is hair remover. Hair remover, this is the type of hair remover you might use um, on yourself if you were trying to remove the hair on your legs or something. And uh, Nair, for example, uh, is a strong uh, base because uh, strong bases also dissolve hair. Uh, oven cleaner, a strong base. I already mentioned that um, the pancreas produces bases to help dissolve fats. Well, oven cleaner is also a strong base because it uh, is used to break down the uh, oil and grease that accumulates in an oven. Uh, it uh, breaks that down uh, pretty good and makes it easy to wash out uh, with water. Drain cleaner is next on the list at 13 and a half. Drain cleaner is exceptionally caustic and uh, it's used uh, because that, that strong base not only dissolves uh, greases, but it also dissolves hair. Remember I mentioned a strong base for hair remover and a strong base for grease removal in an oven. Well, a drain cleaner is strong enough to do both of those. And uh, greases are what tend to clog kitchen sinks and hair is what tends to cause bath uh, clog bathroom sinks and uh, showers and tubs. So drain cleaner is usually a very, very strong base. The last on the list is concentrated lye. Lye, L-Y-E, is a, an old name for a really strong base, which is sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is about the strongest base that we ever use in class, and it uh, also used to be used to make soap. Uh, so there's an old ty type of soap called lye soap. We don't use lye soap anymore because it, it's made with such a strong base that if any of it's left over, the lye soap itself can be pretty hard on your skin. Um, and so now we use uh, soaps that are not quite as basic as the soap that would be produced from lye soap. Now I mentioned that uh, these bases all uh, dissolve uh, greases and things. That's really what they're doing is they're converting oils and greases into the equivalent of soaps and that's why bases feel slippery. They work on the oils in your skin, in your hands when you touch them, and convert them into soaps. So uh, bases feel slippery because they're making soap out of your own oils. To determine pH of substances, we need to use some kind of an indicator. An indicator is a substance that changes colors at certain pHs. 
Many indicators only turn one color. For example, phenolphthalein, which is one of the most common indicators that we'll encounter, is colorless in acids. And it turns pink and then eventually a pinkish purple uh, when we put it into bases. Here you'll see an indicator which is changing from a pinkish color to a yellow color as the substance slowly gets more and more acidic. And over here we've got one which is changing in a base, it's blue, and then in an acid it turns to a yellow color. To, um, as I mentioned, to determine uh, these pHs we need an indicator. Uh, in order to quickly determine a pH, we can use pH paper. pH paper has many different indicators soaked into it, which allows the paper to turn five or more, more colors so that pHs can be more easily determined. So here's what pH paper looks like. And if you look at the charts on the container of pH paper, you'll see these colors. And these colors right here uh, indicate uh, the pH. Now, they're not for getting a whole lot of significant digits, uh, therefore estimating the pH um, in uh, basically a whole number. So pH of two, three, four. There are some pH papers that are designed around specific ranges that can do a little bit better than that. Uh, but generally these pH papers are for uh, the whole numbers. Now the best way to determine the pH is with a pH meter or by doing a calculation. The pH of a substance can be calculated using a formula negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. That's what these square brackets over here mean. The square brackets that you see around the H plus mean the hydrogen ion concentration in molarity units or moles per liter. Um, so square brackets mean concentration and the concentration units we use are molarity or moles per liter. So this is the negative logarithm of the hydrogen ion concentration. That's how we would read that. Uh, if the hydrogen ion concentration is known, then you can use a calculator to provide your pH number. Now pH meters have been designed to do these uh, quickly and show uh, very exact pH results almost immediately. Uh, but extreme care must be taken with pH meters as they're very fragile. Uh, they tend to uh, dry out and they don't give correct results if they're not properly cared for. We use these pH meters sometimes, uh, but uh, we're not going to be using them in class this year. So let's look at some examples. You've got two on your notes page. So follow along on your calculator as we do these. The first question says, what is the pH of an acidic solution with a hydrogen ion concentration of 0.0016 molar? Well, you remember from the previous slide that the concentration uh, is represented by the H uh, plus in square brackets and the formula for pH pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration so pH here is equal to the negative logarithm LOG that's what that stands for of the hydrogen ion concentration so what that means is we need to plug in that that uh, number that we've got there because that right there is our hydrogen ion concentration. Well, you'll need to do that on your scientific calculator. So here's your scientific calculator, the ones we use in class. You can use your own calculator, of course. But how do we enter this into our calculators? If you look down on the bottom right, you'll see the negative button right there. That right there is the sign changing button. We don't want to use the minus sign. We use that button down there. So we do that and we say the negative log so where do we find the log button? There's the log button on our calculators. You see that? And when we plug that in, our calculator is going to show this negative log and it'll have an open parentheses already there for us to plug in our number. And uh, we go on and plug in our 0 0.0016. 
we can close the parentheses or on these calculators it doesn't matter you can just hit the equal sign uh, and it'll close the parentheses for you and you'll end up with this number 2.79588017 now we're only going to keep a couple of significant digits actually uh, we'll just stop right there um, after that one digit after the decimal point now since the digit after that's a nine we're going to round that up to an eight so we'll say that our pH is 2.8 so when we come back to our calculation we have plugged in our negative logarithm of 0 0.0016 molar and we end up with our pH of 2.8 so how about the pH of a solution of 0 0.2 molar phosphoric acid, H3PO4? Well, the 0 0.2 molar that we see right there, that right there is what we would normally plug in for our hydrogen ion concentration because acids do make hydrogens. But we've got a little trick here that we have to look out for this particular acid has three hydrogens so for every mole of this acid that we put into water it can produce up to three moles of hydrogen ions so we need to count the hydrogens in our acid and make sure we account for them the hydrogen ion concentration for this acid is going to be whatever the molarity is for the acid and we're going to have to multiply that by three. So what about other acids? An acid like hydrochloric acid only has one H, so we would just use the molarity of the acid. Something like H2SO4, sulfuric acid, it's diprotic, which means it has two protons or two hydrogens. So whatever its molarity is, we would need to multiply that by two to get the hydrogen ion concentration. So anyway, let's go back to our example. Remember that the pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. And that hydrogen ion concentration we can get from the molarity because it's an acid that produces hydrogens. And then we also need to multiply that by 3 right there because we do have 3 hydrogens in our acid. Now that assumes that all three of the hydrogens come out into the solution. That's not always true. Weak acids, some of the hydrogens stay stuck to the acid and don't come off. But for purposes of this calculation, we're going to assume that all the hydrogens come off. So if it has three hydrogens on the acid, we're going to have to multiply the molarity times three in order to do our pH calculation. You can do this calculation outside of uh, the, the parentheses, and then you would just get 0.6, or you can just do them in the parentheses. So you go back to your calculator, you punch in negative log, and it opens the parentheses for you. You put in 0 0.20 times 3, and then close your parentheses, and you end up with a pH of 0 0.22. So this is... Um, quite a strong acid.